Hello and welcome to On the Clock with the St. Louis Sports Commission. I'm Todd Blackstock. Well, today we have with the St. Louis Sports Commission, the Vice President of Events, Mr. Chris Roseman. Chris, thanks for joining us. Hey, Todd, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, looks like the St. Louis Sports Commission has been very busy sending out uh, bids during the bid process. I kind of want to jump right into this. You've just sent out 30 bids, and, uh, and I'd like to, to get your input on some of the uh, important ones and uh, some of the diverse ones you guys are uh, sending out Sure, for. sure, yeah. Our, our summer vacation this, this year was definitely spent in the office with, uh, with our staff and, and all the partners throughout the community that we work with to put together these 30 bids uh, that the NCAA has come out with a process, um, and we're excited about uh, bidding on these events, and, and hopefully we'll bring these uh, to St. Louis here very soon. Now I'm looking down some of these things. You're going for Division I wrestling championships. Two of them here, one at uh, Chaffetz Arena, one at Scott Trade. Are you bidding on the same events for different venues, or, or how does that work? Well, you know, the NCAA wrestling championships have been here six times in the last 13 years. So that's one that we really feel like that's a great fit for St. Louis, that we always want to you, know, you always want to bring that one back as often as we can because uh, the fans love it here, the coaches love it here, the student athletes love it here, the media love it here. You know, and how St. Louis is situated with the D1 wrestling championships, uh, with it being at Scott Trade, connected to the hotels and the restaurants, and and accessible uh, via the Metrolink, and it, it's it's a terrific fit for that championship. So, and the last time we had it here was in 2012, sold it out, set a record, and um, we want to build on that record next time and bring it back. So, working on D1 wrestling championships, you know, hopefully get that once, possibly twice in this next four-year bid cycle that goes from 2015 to, uh, through 18. And then um, also looking at the NCAA Division II wrestling championships. And um, we've, we've got a, a, another gem of a building in, in downtown St. Louis at Chaffetz Arena. And we were at Chaffetz last year doing the Visa Championships as we welcomed the uh, Olympic gymnasts through town as they were on their way to London. And um, has such a great experience with that, uh, with that facility and the personnel over there at, at Chaffetz. And uh, we want to replicate that again and, and, and do that for wrestling. Now, was that doable to do two of them at once? Or are, is the Division One and Division Two wrestling championships, are they held around the same time? Well, here's the beauty of this one, is that we're looking at the, those championships are a week apart. Nice. So, you know, you'd be back-to-back -back weekends in March doing wrestling in St. Louis. So, of course, Chaffetz is a little bit smaller. Um, about half the size, of course, is, is Scott Trade Center. And um, in the Division II championships doesn't have uh, as many athletes, and is, um, but that venue is, would be spectacular mm -hmm. uh, because they don't have as many mats on the floor. It's a very intimate setting, um, so that works out real well. So we would finish that one up on Sunday and then go right back at it on the, the following day, Monday, get ready for the D1 championships at Scott Trade. So it would be back-to-back -back weekends. It'd be a nice little warm-up to the D2, and then you kind of expand it to yeah. the D1. And I've been to the D1 championship several times, and it's a great event. I mean, you've got you know the schools from Iowa and Oklahoma. It seems like the Midwest plays real prominent in wrestling and what a greater place than St. Louis to have that. Well, it's easy to get here. You know, we're, where we are geographically in the country, uh, it really fits well with that championship. And, you know, and like I said, you know, once you, once you get here to town, park the car for four days and you're done. You know, you could, you could walk everywhere. You just jump on the Metro Lake if you want to go somewhere, if you want to get to the landing or if you want to get somewhere else. Um, but it's, it's a terrific fit for that championship. And, you know, that is one of our favorite events just because of all the great, uh, the volunteers that are associated with it. And we've got 350 volunteers that make that happen. Wow. And we're not talking about just volunteers that are kind of at hospitality desk and kind of, you know, you know helping people while they're here. We have those too. But that championship is very dependent on the volunteers themselves to actually run the event. So we've got probably the same core that have been around for, since 13 years for, for doing that championship. You know, it seems like we've got a stronghold on that. We get it a lot. Um, another one we get a lot is the Division I ice champion, uh, the hockey championships. I mean, we've had that several times as well down at Scott Trade Center, and I think uh, we do a great job hosting that. Yeah, we've had hockey, um, we've had hockey three or four times in the last uh, four years, and um, it, last time we had the Frozen Four here, men's, men's college hockey championship. That was in 2007, and uh, we really pride ourselves on how we handled that. We worked hand-in-hand -hand with the Blues and the local youth hockey community, 
and um, along with our, our hockey community on the uh, sports commission board and um, really made that work. Did a really great event uh, starting in November. We had a, like a all-star skills competition with, with local youth hockey um, that rolled into the event week. And, and on Monday, we had the skills finals down in Scott Trade Center. And then we did a game on Tuesday night and some more skills finals on Wednesday and Thursday, of course, of the games. And Friday was you know an off day, but just a wonderful day for their what they call their Hobie Baker Awards. And then it culminated with uh, Michigan State winning on Saturday night. So. Another, another event in St. Louis that we, we, we set the record for attendance um, at the time and uh, looking forward to getting that one back. Chris, one of the things I love about the Sports Commission is you guys, the diversified way you go after things. I mean, you're going after Division I, you're going after Division II, you're going after women's things as well. And that's the way to do it. I'm looking down here, you got the Division I Women's Volleyball Championships and uh, Women's Gymnastic Championships you're bidding on too. Yeah, and Women's Bowling's on there as well. Women's Bowling, wow. Which will be a lot of fun. Yeah, the Volleyball Championships, we've uh, it's been on our radar for, a, for many years and we'd love to have that one here and that's a December event and we've been to that event numerous times we feel that's a good fit uh, for St. Louis and gymnastics you know going back to what we did for the visa championships we take gymnastics over to St. Louis University even though they don't have a gymnastics program um, they've been terrific to work with and, and welcome it with open arms and you know it's fun to get out of the city every once in a while too because we've got a great a community a great region and so we're also take, looking, taking a look at bowling and doing the women's bowling championship out in uh, Tropicana Lanes in Clayton Oh, okay. Which would be terrific. Yeah. We put the we use the hotels in Clayton. Um, you know, you you've been to Clayton, and <laughs> Clayton has some wonderful restaurants, some wonderful attractions. It's close to the park, and um, that's an April event that would be a great fit for Tropicana. It's nice to spread the love there a little bit. Now I'm looking at cross country men and women's. Yeah, that's part of the Division Two uh, festival. The festival is um, happens at the Division Two level of the NCAA happens uh, and for the fall, it's, it's a combination of uh, cross country, combination of volleyball and soccer. And um, we will do those championships throughout the same week. So those athletes, 1200 athletes or so, are here for seven days in December, which would be just a great time. We could show off our city, do some wonderful parties at City Museum or the new Paul Park Village comes online then. And, uh, and we're looking forward to winning that one as well. We've got Division Two field hockey out of Linwood going out to St. Charles. Yeah. I know they've got the nice family arena out there with three new minor league teams. Mm -hmm. uh, soccer championships at Hunter Stadium at Linwood, and it looks like women's uh, and men's and volleyball. Yeah, to round those out. Yeah, well, the, the volleyball is going to be terrific, and uh, looking at doing women's ice hockey as well at the family arena. So you know that's another one that we think is a great fit, and we do have Division One hockey in town, and it's on the women's side at Linwood University. And uh, they're excited to, to bring women's hockey to town. Um, they've been in the league for a couple of years now. And wouldn't it be great to, to bring that championship to St. Charles and, and put on a great show out there? With 30 bids, what's a realistic, uh, you know, what do you think you could get out of that? We're 15, get all 30. 20? You think you get all oh, 30? Yeah. No, we're not going to get all 30. <laughs> I, I think we're going to get plenty. We're going to get plenty. And we're going to, you know, we're looking at the years 2014 through 18. And if, hey, if we can get two or three a year, that'd be terrific. And this is the tip of the iceberg. This is this process that the NCAA has. You know, it starts with this process, but it kind of, it'll roll into the NCAA men's and women's basketball championship. So basketball is not even on there yet. So we're talking second and third rounds. Yeah, we've we're got talking, those coming up this year. We've we got talking. about one minute left. Okay. Let's touch on the amateur sports legislation. Uh, before that, well, I know December 11th is when we'll find out. Right. We'll and find so I want to talk about the amateur sports legislation real quick and the uh, Stan Musial Awards, which will be coming up on what date? This past here. August, after four years of trying to get some legislation passed um, up in Jefferson City, uh, they, f they passed this legislation that's really going to help the state of Missouri, St. Louis, Kansas City, Joplin, Springfield, uh, go after and get these NCAA events. Uh, it's, it's legislation that's going to help us. That's why we're able to spread the net a little bit wider than tip we typically do. And um, that amateur sports legislation goes into effect now, and um, that should uh, bring some really good results here in December. Now, the former National Sportsmanship Awards are now the Musi Awards, and oh, yeah. that's going to be held? That's going to be held November 9th. Change the location, change the venue downtown. We're, we're excited to be downtown with that, with that event. It's going to be an incredible event. November 9th, go to musual.com uh, to find out more information about that event. All right, Chris, Fine. thank you very much. Thanks, Todd. Chris Roseman from the St. Louis Sports Commission. Thanks a lot for watching On the Clock with the St. Louis Sports Commission. We're out of time. I'm Todd Blackstock. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.